A lot of times we underestimate the enemy that we fight and we try to fight him with devices that we're familiar with. It's another way of saying we try to fight the enemy, we try to overcome in life using our own power and our own resources. We know just from our basic life experience that life sometimes has a way of knocking us down, of overwhelming us, knocking us off our square from time to time. And sooner or later, you get to the point where you recognize that you can't do this thing called life successfully by yourself. And you might say, well, what about those who have, you know, amassed great wealth and done all these great things? Well, that may be possible, but the question becomes, what about the end of their lives? What is left? Ladies and gentlemen, you can't take all the stuff we get caught up in with you when you die. I think sometimes we need a reality check and you have to begin to ask the question, what really matters in the end? Do you know where you're going when you pass from this life? The time has come and the kingdom of God is now at hand. Change the way you think and believe in the good news. Good evening, everyone. My name is Travis Alexis Newsom, and I'm delighted that of all the things you could be doing at this very moment, you have chosen to spend this time here with me tonight. And it is my sincere desire and expectation that this experience will help you to become all that you created to be. So make sure you get ready, subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave a comment below, share, and tell everyone you know that we're about to grow together as we explore the keys of the kingdom. everybody. I'm so excited about our time together. I always look forward to our time together. I'm so glad that you're here. And before I do anything else, I need to give a shout out to the KOTK fam. Those of you, you know who you are. You regularly watch these videos. You have subscribed to my YouTube channel. You have liked the videos. You've engaged with the content. You engage in the chat. You've reached out to me. You've shown your support in a myriad of ways. I want to let you know how much I appreciate you. I'm so glad that you are here. And perhaps you're here for the first time. You have no idea who I am. Well, first and foremost, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. However you got this link, I believe that you're destined to be watched, watching this video right now. And I believe that it will greatly impact your life. So I'm so glad that you're here. Make sure that you stay connected. Make sure that you comment in the chat section below. Uh, engage in a chat. It's always lively, always robust conversation. Make sure you also uh, comment in the comment section. If you're watching this video later on, uh, you're not watching during the premiere, but maybe you're watching on your own schedule, on your own time or on demand. Make sure you say something in the comment section to let us know that you're here so that we can see you and get to know you. Also, make sure you stay connected by subscribing to my YouTube channel, Travis Alexis Newsom. There you'll find previous episodes of KTOK, KOT. TK, I should say, and uh, all other kind of inspirational videos that will uplift you, that will inspire you. So make sure you stay connected that way. Turn on notifications so that you can be alerted anytime I upload a new video. You don't want to miss out on that. Also, make sure that you follow me on my very social media platforms. You can find me as Travis Lexus Newsome on TikTok, on Twitter, on Facebook, especially Facebook, on Instagram, on all of them. D E M all. <laughs> Oh, oh damn, I'm just joking, y'all. It's all good. To make sure you stay connected with me there. Follow me on my Facebook page. Again, make sure uh, that you're staying in the loop of things that I'm up to. For those of you who track with this work that I do and you're blessed by the content that I share, make sure you stay connected that way. Or perhaps you want to send me email. You want to go deeper in your walk with God or you want to go deeper uh, on this particular journey with me. Uh, and you want to connect with me in a deeper way, feel free to email me. Or even if you have a prayer request or a testimony, some way that this program or other things that I've done have positively impacted you, I would love to hear from you. Email me at travis.alexis.newsome at gmail.com. Again, travis.alexis.newsome at gmail.com so I can hear from you that way. Or if you prefer snail mail, make sure you reach out to me, Travis Alexis Newsome, P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546. 
in a good old U.S. of A. So once again, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm excited about our time together. We have been on this awesome, this incredible journey. And for those of you who are new, well, before I get into that, I'll save that part for later. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time you've given us together, God. We thank you for, uh, God, all that you've shown us in this series. Father God, all that you've shown us on these programs. Father God, we don't take it for granted. God, we thank you for how you have opened our eyes, how you're strengthening us, how you are uh, increasing on the inside of us and causing us to be stronger as a result to the material that we are getting into. And God, we pray tonight as we delve deeper into your word, as we delve, deep, delve deeper into truth, that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding, Lord God, cause us to see even greater things as we go deeper in you. I pray for the influence and the infilling and the refreshing of the Holy Spirit to give us insight that is beyond our years, beyond our understanding and beyond our experience. God, we thank you. And I pray for everyone who is watching this video tonight, Father God. I pray that you would impact them in a way that they will never be the same. Cause them to know you and cause them to know who they are in you and all that you have given them in your name. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed said, amen, amen. Fantastic. Let's go right into it. As you know, we've been on this powerful series. Can you believe that this is part 16? Wow, of this series called The Gospel of the Kingdom. The Gospel of the Kingdom. It has been fantastic. If you've been blessed by this series, make sure you put it in the chat. Maybe highlight a few things that you've learned along the way or different ways that this series has impacted your life positively. Make sure to light up the chat right now. Put that info in there. Encourage one another. Give shout outs to one another. You know how we do. Make sure you let us know some of the things, some of the insights that you've gotten as a result of this particular series. But turn with me to our foundational text, Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. And we have a lot to get through as always, but we'll get through what we need to get through tonight and we'll keep it going as the spirit leads. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. And it reads, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And like I've said, we just read out of Mark chapter one, verses 14 through 15. If this is one of your, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, and especially while we've been on this series, I definitely encourage you after this video, make sure you go back to the previous 15 episodes and come up to speed. It's like building a tower. You're coming in and we're like on the 10th floor or on the 16th floor now. And you may be out of the loop and some of the other stuff that we have highlighted. You want to make sure you don't miss that information. But for the sake of just making sure we're all on the same page enough tonight to progress, I'm going to hit on these key points and then we're going to go into the new material tonight. First and foremost, the kingdom of God refers to God's exceeding and abundant ability to act or produce an effect by virtue of his authority as the absolute owner, as the, abs as the creator and absolute owner of all things. My God have mercy. Also, we establish that the time is fulfilled means simply that the time has come or the time is now. The kingdom of God is at hand means that the kingdom of God is within your reach. And one's proximity to the kingdom is not a matter of time nor space, but understanding. The word repent refers to the change the way you think. And to believe means to think to be true or, as I like to put it, to become real to you. That is, when you believe something, that means that it has become real to you. The word gospel refers to good news and the kingdom of God was made accessible to us through Christ himself. And this access is represented in attitude, authority and appearance, attitude, authority and appearance. And the name of Jesus Christ gives us the authority to think of ourselves as children of God. Furthermore, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is the God ordained way in which we publicly profess our faith in Jesus Christ as the son of God the one through whom we gain access into the kingdom. And one must be born again, born of the spirit in order to see or enter the kingdom of God. And the last key point that we touched on from last week, from our last time together was this. To be born again means that one is now begotten of God by virtue of having received the Holy Spirit 
whose indwelling empowers the individual, individual to become a child of God. I want to read that one more time. To be born again means that one is now begotten of God by virtue of having received the Holy Spirit, whose indwelling empowers the individual to become a child of God. And now we come to part 16. I am excited. So last week, as I mentioned, we talked about being born again or being born of the spirit or namely born of the Holy Spirit. And that begs the question, what is or who is the Holy Spirit? What or who is the Holy Spirit? I want to draw your attention to a particular passage out of Acts chapter one. And we're going to look at verses one through eight. And it reads, the former account I made, O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them, watch this, not not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which... He said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Wow, there we go. Verse six, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority. And then here we go, verse eight, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And I want to highlight that word or that phrase, Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Spirit? What is this thing? And and you know, it's funny because a lot of times, you know, people may refer to as the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Holiness. But the question becomes, what, what is this thing? Who is this thing? Is it a what? Is it a who? What, is it just some force? What is it? So I think it's important as we begin to understand what Jesus is referring to when he says Holy Spirit or who Jesus is referring to when he says Holy Spirit. I think what help us to understand uh, what that term spirit in particular refers to. So when you look at that term, you then begin to ask the question, well, what is a spirit? And a lot of times you think of like ghosts and woo, woo, woo and spooky things. And there is a mysterious element to spirits, but we want to break this down and have a better understanding because, again, it's going to be critical in understanding what it means to be born again and thus entering into the kingdom and operating as a member or uh, as a part or within the kingdom of God. Amen, somebody. So the question becomes, what is a spirit? Well, first and foremost, let's establish this. Key number one for tonight. Spirits are real beings. Can you say that with me? That may seem very basic, but we need to establish this, that spirits are real beings. Do you know there are people who don't believe that spirits are real? They believe we're nothing but flesh and blood. They only believe in what they can see with their natural eyes. But here we have, even in the scriptures, Jesus refers to spirits himself. You know, it's tough. It's hard to believe that someone can actually be a Christian and doesn't believe in the reality of the spiritual realm. Doesn't make sense to me. Because Jesus himself often talked about the spiritual realm. He operated in the spiritual realm. So spirits are real beings. Jesus addressed unclean or demonic spirits, for example. Turn with me to Mark chapter 9, verse 25. And it says, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, watch this, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. So here we see Jesus, the master, if you will, Lord of Lords, God made flesh, speaking to a spirit, addressing it for what it was that had possessed or that had tormented a particular individual. So Jesus speaks himself of the reality of spirits. Also consider this, that Jesus says that God himself is a spirit. John chapter four, verse 24 says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So all of this establishes key point number one for tonight, and that is that spirits are real beings. But then that begs the question, what is this term spirit referring to? Well, it is derived from the Greek word pneuma, 
which simply means a simple essence devoid of all or at least all grosser matter and possessed of the power of knowing, desiring, deciding, and acting. I'm going to say that again. Spirit, that term spirit or the Greek word pneuma refers to a simple essence devoid of all or at least all grosser matter and possessed of the power of knowing, desiring, deciding, and acting. One thing to take into consideration, we've established that spirits are real beings, but we also need to establish that spirits don't have flesh or bones. <laughs> spirits don't have flesh and bones. One might put it this way, that spirits don't have physical bodies, but I want to stick with what the text says, that spirits don't have flesh or bones. For example, check out, uh, check out Luke chapter 24, verse 39. In fact, we'll start reading in verse 36. This was after Jesus had risen from the dead, according to Luke's account. And he says now, and it says, now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. Verse 37. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. In other words, they thought they were seeing a ghost. So naturally, they're freaked out because they saw that Jesus died on the cross. They saw that he was buried, but now he is standing here before them. So they're like, it's, what, what is this that we're seeing? We saw you die. We saw your body being buried in a tomb, but now we see you standing here. So it's understandable to think that they maybe they thought they were seeing a spirit. But then verse 38, Jesus says, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? And watch verse 39. Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So we have, we've established point number one, that spirits are real beings, but we've also established that though they are real beings, they don't have flesh or bones. And that leads me to this next point. Somebody, somebody take a pause here and take a breather. Are you with me? <laughs> now, I, I felt led to pause here because we're going deep tonight. And those who what, normally watch KOTK, you know how we do. We don't really waste time getting deep unapologetically. So these things are concepts that, you know, we, we may not fully understand from a scientific standpoint. Um, there are people who don't believe in the reality of spirits. They think it's a bunch of superstition or myths. Um, but as we said, that Jesus himself speaks to the reality of spirits he rebuked unclean spirits, and he refers to God himself as a spirit. And it's important to understand when we talk about kingdom and what it means to uh, enter into the kingdom and operate according to kingdom principles, it's important to understand the spiritual realm because the kingdom of God is indeed a spiritual thing. Amen, somebody. If you understand what I'm saying, type amen in the chat. So we've established that key point number one for tonight, that spirits are real beings. And now we've also established that spirits don't have flesh and bones, right? But now that leads me to point number three, or key number three, as I like to say, and that spirits have the capacity to perceive. Spirits have the capacity to perceive. Consider that evil spirits recognize those who belong to God. I'm going to give you an example so you don't think I'm making up something. Turn with me to Acts chapter 19. Verses 11 through 15. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 15. And it reads, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Hmm. Verse 13. Then some of the itinerant Jew, Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Verse 14. Also, there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish priest, a Jewish chief priest, I might add, who did so. But watch verse 15. This thing always gets me. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? I mean, think about that. He says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? So essentially, we see that this entity that happened to be an unclean spirit or a demonic spirit, if you will, recognized that these guys in particular weren't necessarily legit, right? And, and they essentially said, 
we exercise you or we cast you out in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, which means that they did not have connection directly with Jesus themselves. They did not believe in Jesus themselves, but they had heard about his works. And so they thought they would dabble around in this thing called exorcism. And they really didn't recognize the power that they had because they really didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And that is a whole sermon unto itself. That's a whole message unto itself. Can, can I pause here? Can I put this in here? In order to operate in the power of Jesus, you need to know Jesus himself. Can, can I bring it home for those of you who grew up in a church? To overcome in this walk, it's not enough that you lean on the reputation of your grandmother knowing the Lord or of your grandfather knowing the Lord or of the uncle who happens to be a preacher in your family. You need to know him for yourself. Can, can I go deeper right here? You know, you know, I wasn't planning on going here. I never am. But a lot of times we underestimate the enemy that we fight. And we try to fight him with devices that we're familiar with, devices that weren't weren't ordained by God. It's another way of saying we try to fight the enemy. We try to overcome in life using our own power and our own resources, failing to realize that we can't win in this life by ourselves. And I know that hurts the ego because we want to think that we can overcome in our own power. We we like to be celebrated. We want to think that we can do this thing, that we can win in life and we can be victorious and then boast about how wonderful we did it and how we did it and how we overcame and yada, yada, yada. But let's be honest with ourselves here. We know just from our basic life experience that life sometimes has a way of knocking us down. Life sometimes has a way of overwhelming us. Life has a way of knocking us off our square from time to time. Hello, somebody. And sooner or later, you get to the point where you recognize that you can't do this thing called life successfully by yourself. And you might say, well, what about those who have, you know, amassed great wealth and done all these great things? Well, that may be possible. But the question becomes, what about the end of their lives? What is left? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you can't take all the stuff we get caught up in with you when you die. I know that sounds very basic, not trying to spook you out, but I think sometimes we need a reality check and you have to begin to ask the question, what really matters in the end? Do you know where you're going when you pass from this life? Do you have a confidence? See, it's this kind of thing that money can't buy. It's this kind of thing that fame and fortune really, really can't help you with. You need to know Jesus for yourself. Yeah, you already know. I wasn't planning on going there. But this particular passage always gets me because these men thought just by what they heard, not knowing Jesus themselves, help me, Lord, they thought that they could exercise his power. And here comes this entity, this demonic spirit, this unclean spirit, essentially saying, you have no idea what you're doing. Jesus, I know. Jesus is legit. Paul, I know, because Paul knows Jesus. Paul is legit. But who are you? And if you read the rest of this particular chapter, you'll find that this one particular spirit in this individual messed these guys up because they were dealing in something that they did not know about. Lord have mercy. I wish I had time to work on that. So let's go back over some of our key points that we've learned just today or tonight already. Point number one, spirits are real beings. Number two, spirits don't have flesh and blood. And number three, spirits have the capacity to perceive. They, that means they have the capacity to observe. They have the capacity to watch. They study, if you will. Now, I'm using spirits in a general way, but there are different kinds of spirits. There's a spirit of man. There are demonic spirits. That are, there are angelic spirits that are of God. There's a spirit of God himself. So I know there are different spirits. But we're talking about this terminology, generally speaking, um, as beings that are not limited to physical bodies or flesh and bone. But that then leads me to point number four. Spirits have the ability to influence people and animals. Oh, yes. Spirits have the ability to influence people and animals. It's like, what? Just say and animals because the Bible speaks of it. Don't believe me? Let, let's first go here. Turn with me to Mark chapter nine, verses 17 and 18. And this story always grips me because this is the account of the man who had a son who was demon possessed and he had brought his son to his disciples and they really weren't able to do anything. If you look at the biblical record, if you read the entirety of Mark chapter nine, you'll find that was because of lack of faith. Lord, that's a whole different conversation. We'll save that for another night. 
But now he comes in verse 17 and it says, then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, speaking to Jesus, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. Watch this. And who and wherever it seizes him, it throws him this spirit, this unclean spirit or this demonic spirit. It throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. My God, have mercy. So here a man is in great desperation. The story turns out well, if you will, if, if, if you don't know, if you read the entirety of Mark chapter nine, uh, this young man winds up being delivered by the supernatural power of Jesus name. Uh, so I encourage you to read that in your own in your own time. But I wanted to highlight here just an example of how spirits in particular, in this case, unclean or demonic spirits influence people. But then there's the other part that I mentioned that spirits can also influence animals. Check this out. Matthew chapter eight, verses 30 through 32. And it reads, now a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine feeding. Verse 31. So the demons begged him saying, if you cast us out, speaking to Jesus, the, the demonic spirits are speaking to Jesus. Now pay attention. If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. Permit us to go away into the herd of swine. Watch this, verse 32. And he said to them, go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine. Wow. And suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Wow. So these demonic, unclean spirits now inhabited swine or pigs, if you will, animals, and caused them to destroy themselves. So we see that those spirits are real beings. They don't have physical bodies themselves or they don't have flesh and bones. But being very real, they have the power to perceive because they knew who Jesus was. They knew who Paul was and they knew who the seven sons of Zebra were not. And they also have the power to influence. So let's go back through our key points. Key number one, spirits are real beings. Key number two, spirits don't have flesh and blood. Key number three, spirits have the capacity to receive or to perceive. And point number four, spirits have the ability to influence people and animals. My God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But then that leads me to key number five. Oh, my God. And I have to wrap it up here. But I'm going to tease you with this. Key number five. And that is this. Though there are many kinds of spirits, there is only one Holy Spirit. Oh, can I put it this way? There are many kinds of spirits, but only one Holy Spirit. So in our time together tonight, we, we delved briefly into the world of spirits. And some of you are like, whoa, this is really deep spirits. And all you spooked out, don't be freaked out. Just stay with us on this journey. Because when you understand what it means to have the Holy Spirit and for the Spirit of God to live on the inside of you, hey, there's no need to be afraid of the others. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Can, can I say that again? The more you understand the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the more you understand if you have received the Holy Spirit, because again, we established Romans chapter eight, verse nine says, if any man does not have the spirit, he is none of his. But if you've been born again and the spirit of God lives on the inside of you, don't you know you don't need to be afraid of any other spirit? Can, can I go further? I wasn't planning on going here tonight, but can I go further? That when the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, that the other spirits are subject to you? Lord, have mercy. Have, Lord, have mercy. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So now we've delved into the realm of spirits and talking about spirits and how they're real, how they influence and so forth. But next week, we're going to go deeper into talking about the Holy Spirit in particular, the Holy Spirit in particular. And I just feel led to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our time together tonight. God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your spirit who guides us into all truth and teaches us even the things to come. God, I thank you that you don't want us to be ignorant. But you want us to know, know God. You want to show us all things. And we just thank you, Lord God, for the great love that you've lavished on us tonight. And God, I pray a special prayer over those tonight who are dealing, who are tormented, my God, by spirits, Lord God, that cause them to 
uh, harm themselves by unclean spirits that cause them to think thoughts or to do things that are not consistent with your will. God that are struggling with unclean spirits that harass them, that torment them at night, Father. I speak deliverance right now in the name of Jesus over them. I thank you that in the power of Jesus' name, that every demonic spirit that would come upon them, it could is rendered is rendered defeated in the power of Jesus' name. In fact, right here, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus, be free. And by the power of Jesus name, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are free from every unclean spirit, every demonic spirit that has gripped your life. I command off of your life right now by the power of Jesus name. And I declare in Jesus name, you are free. Glory be to God. Now, Father, I pray that you will fill them with pressure with your spirit cause them to walk in victory by the power of Jesus name. Wow. Lord, we went into it a little bit tonight, didn't we? Wasn't expecting to go there, but I believe somebody was touched tonight in particular, even by that prayer. Make sure you stay with us on this journey. That has been an awesome time, hasn't it? I'm excited about all the other things we're going to get into. Make sure you stay connected. Leave a comment in the chat section below. Make sure you comment in the comments below if you're watching this video later on. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you turn on notifications. Connect with me on my various social media platforms, Travis Alexis Newsome, and follow that hashtag, Travis Alexis Newsome, so you can be kept in the loop on the things that I share. Make sure you reach out to me. You have questions. You've been impacted by this time tonight in a profound and unexpected way, and you want to connect with me even more deeply. Reach out to me via email, travis.alexis.newsom at gmail.com. And lastly, if you prefer snail mail, you can reach out to me that way. We'd love to hear from you. Even if it's a prayer request or a testimony, you can reach out to me at Travis Alexis Newsom, P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546, in the good old U.S. of A. And ladies and gentlemen, I have enjoyed our time together tonight. Make sure you spread the word. If this journey has been blessing you, don't be selfish. Share it with somebody else who you know that this journey will bless as well. But until we meet again, my sincere prayer for you is that everything you experience will contribute to you becoming all that God the Father created you to be in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. See you next week. Say to somebody, put it in the chat. Say, come next week. Same time, same place. God bless.